The story of Joshua Milton Blahi, nicknamed General Bot Naked, can be likened to that of the biblical soul who met Jesus on his way to Damascus. Born in the Liberian capital Monrovia to a grand family, Blahi was handed by his father to several tribal elders who initiated him as a pagan high priest in 1982 at the age of just 11. He then grew from a pagan priest to becoming one of the most feared and evil warlords during the Liberian Civil War, fighting naked and making human sacrifices. But in a radical transformation akin to that of Saul on his way to Damascus, Joshua encountered Jesus Christ. He is now an evangelical preacher, writer, and a reformer of lives. It is only Christianity that can help this nation because Christianity it is the only belief, the only faith that tells you to love your enemies, that tells you to accept and forgive the one who hates you. Am I talking to somebody? In this edition on History Media, we tell the harrowing story of one of Africa's most feared and evil warlords, Joshua Milton Blahi, also known as General Butt Naked. We will look at his civil war atrocities and his miraculous encounter with Jesus Christ and subsequent conversion to Christianity. Please come with me. The journey began on September 38, 1971, when Joshua Milton Blahi was born into a grand family in Monrovia, the Liberian capital. Some other members of his tribe resided in Sino County, located in the south of the country, and belief in child sacrifice and black magic was common among the grand people. When he was seven years old, his father granted parental control over him to several grand elders who arranged for Blahi to become a warrior. At the age of 11 in 1982, he was initiated as a pagan high priest. As Blahi noted in his memo, the role of high priest included overseeing human sacrifices. Like other grand priests, Blahi would use vision to determine which individual would be sacrificed next. After receiving the vision, Milton Blahi would give the victim's last name to the village elders who would then lead a procession to the sacrificed victim's house, abducting him and then sacrificing them atop an altar. And after a few invocations, the victim would then be ritually dismembered. In 1980, Master Sergeant Samuel Doe of the Armed Forces of Liberia, AFL, staged a coup d'etat overthrowing the then president. William Tolbert. Being from the same tribe as Do, Blahi has a tribal duty to perform for the president. He then had this to say. Master Sergeant Samuel Kayando was the president, so we injected his fame in the minds of people by taking this wet blood in every food that was cooked. So anyone who eat from that eatery automatically have the fear of uh, President Do. As the 1985 Liberian election was approaching, Blahi was also deployed by Samuel Doe to perform black magic rituals to influence the outcome of the general election. Although Samuel Doe's victory in that election relied more practically on destroying most of the opposition's ballot, Joshua Milton Blahi later explained that his support for Doe was based on a sense of tribal duty as they were both members of the same ethnic group. But how did he transform into a notorious warlord in Liberia? Well, in 1989, Charles Taylor, a rebel leader in the National Patriotic Front of Liberia, the MPFL, launched a rebellion against the government of Samuel Doe, sparking the first Liberian civil war. Taylor was awaiting extradition to Liberia from the United States on charges of corruption and embezzlement, but miraculously escaped from U.S. prison in 1985. Consider subscribing to his pool media and on the bell notification so you don't miss any update. And don't forget to like this video as well. Thank you. In 1990, after Samuel Doe was murdered and his regime collapsed, the United Liberation Movement of Liberia for Democracy, ULIMO, was founded by Kran and Mandinga refugees as well as former AFL soldiers in 1991. Blahi became a member of Ulimbo and fought against the MPFL and rival militias, which came to control most of Liberia amid the conflict. During the conflict, Blahi became a warlord, leading a unit of several dozen combatants known 
as a naked base commandos which operated primarily around the Monrovia area. The unit consisted primarily of child soldiers, whom, along with Blahi himself, frequently wore no clothing except for their shoes and magic charms during fighting. This earned Milton Blahi the nickname General Potnaked. Blahi would claim later that this practice made him and his soldiers immune to bullets. If you shoot me, nothing happened. When you may stand in front of me with RPG, I can stand at it. When I say back to the launcher with my finger, no protection, nothing. When I say back to the launcher with the rocket, I can turn around and go back. As the conflict progresses, Milton Blahi's forces perpetrated numerous atrocities, including cannibalism and human sacrifices. According to Milton Blahi, he frequently received visions from the devil during the conflict. And in these visions, the devil told him that he would become a warrior or a great warrior and should therefore practice human sacrifices and cannibalism in order to increase his powers. Recalling the atrocities that he and his soldiers perpetrated against civilians, Blahi stated in an interview, Blahi also made his soldiers consume psychoactive drugs in order to make them more alert and willing to obey his orders. Blahi would later recall that whenever the naked base commandos captured the town, he would have to make a human sacrifice. He said, The rival militias, including the naked base commandos, frequently fought with each other over control of Liberia's lucrative diamond fields and gold mines, and Blahi traded gold and diamond with Mexican drug cartels for weapons and cocaine. On April 6, 1996, the NPFL launched an operation to arrest Ulimo rebel leader Roosevelt Johnson in the Monrovia region, but this operation was resisted by Blahi and other militias affiliated with Johnson. Unfortunately, the ensuing confrontation resulted in intense fighting in Monrovia, leading ultimately to forced displacement of half of Monrovia's population. And as the city erupted into chaos, a bystander said he saw Blahi standing naked atop a truck, holding an assault rifle in one hand and a man's severed genitals in the other. But how did these notorious warlords convert to Christianity? In 1996, as the civil war was drawing to an end, Blahi claimed to have seen the blood of a child on his hands and received a vision of Jesus Christ who asked Blahi to stop being a slave. After receiving the vision, Blahi eventually converted to Christianity and became an evangelical preacher, ministering to Liberian refugees in Ghana along with former combatants who had served under him during the conflict. From 2006 onward, Blahi also made several visits to Monrovia slums in an effort to engage with and assist former child soldiers who were living there. In 2008, Joshua Milton Blahi became the first Liberian warlord to testify before the Liberian Truth and Reconciliation Commission, which was established by the legislature of Liberia after the conflict to investigate reports of atrocities allegedly perpetrated during the First and the Second Liberian Wars. During his testimony, which was broadcast live on television in Liberia, Blahi testified that he believed the number of murders committed by him and the naked base commandos to be at least 20,000 in total. He was recommended for prosecutorial amnesty by the commission. In 2007, Blahi founded Johnny's Against Violence, a rehabilitation program for young men who fought in the naked base commandos and other units. Blahi would say, and I quote, no matter how much my name go all over the world, without destroying the possibility of another butt naked, I count myself a failure." End of quote. And in a foreword to his autobiography, researcher Jansich wrote, quote, Not since the conversion of Saul of Tarsus on the road to Damascus have I ever heard the conversion story more radically compelling. And after his conversion, Blahi lived in Monrovia in a shabby apartment with exposed wiring. First, he worked as a bodyguard for a bank official, then he sold cassettes of his sermons on the street. His theological message was simple and personal. If God can save me, he can save you too. If you enjoy our story, 
please like it and consider subscribing and i will see you in the next one thank you very much for watching peace